Okay, hi everybody. Again, welcome to our webinar today. My name is Kathy Burrell and I'm an entrepreneur in residence here at WeVC, which just means I've had a business before. So uh, we're really glad that you're here. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to acknowledge that we're gathered here today on the traditional and unceded territory of the Okanagan Silk people. Uh, we recognize, honor and respect indigenous people, past, present and future. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, if you'd like to, uh, we asked everybody to just type in the chat where you're from in BC, that would be great. And if you could also type in what traditional territory you're from or where you're from here in BC, that would be great. Jen is gonna pop a link into the chat and so you can find that for you. And lastly, I'd like to also invite you uh, to uh, at the end of our webinar today, we have a feedback poll. If you have a burning topic that you would love WeBC to do a webinar or we cafe on, we would love to hear that from you. So at the end of the session today, we're going to launch a feedback poll. There's a little section where you can say, do you have any comments? Go ahead and just list a topic and we'll get back to you with details or uh, subscribe to our e-blast and you'll see it coming. Okay. So I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about what we offer here at WeBC. Um, we provide support for your small business journey. We offer financing to get your business started and operating capital, which is very important to fuel your growth. We offer more flexibility than traditional lenders because we take a holistic approach and provide loans based on your business's viability, not based on a formula like a bank does. So this means we provide loans to a diverse range of women owned businesses and support you with integrated services, including complementary training Training, like complimentary training, complimentary mentoring, and business advising. So we're a great choice if you're looking for financing for your small business. Um, from essential business skills development to personalized business advice, we know the right questions to ask and the right resources to connect you with. In our mentoring programs, we get a lot of questions about mentoring. You can connect with a network of women entrepreneurs and experts all around BC who can support and inspire you. And for any of you out there that are already in business, you know, maybe uh, you'd like to volunteer as a mentor. We always have more mentees wanting mentors. So, uh, you know, give us a call, uh, go to our website page. Um, and you can learn more on our website at we-bc.ca. Okay. Uh, today, I also uh, I want to um, uh, welcome our panelists, Stephanie Waters, Project Officer Proc Procurement Assistance Canada, which the short uh, acronym for that is PAC. Today, we're actually going to explore the authoritative website for Government of Canada procurement, and it's called Canada Buys .canada .ca. And of course, that will be in the chat probably 10 times today. So don't worry about that. And you will discover opportunities and, and learn to search for federal government tenders, contract history, and to register on the electronic procurement solution. Uh, today we're hosting Stephanie Waters and she's the project officer with Proc Procurement Assistance Canada. And we'd like to welcome Stephanie today. So I'm gonna turn off my screen share and uh, take it over to Stephanie. Thank you so much, Kathy. Um, yes, thank you for joining us today on a hopefully sunny Thursday morning. Um, as Kathy mentioned, we will be taking a look at Canada Buys. Um, so I am Stephanie Waters, Procurement Assistance Canada uh, Project Officer. Though today, instead of coming to you as one of those. I am going to also be a small business owner um, learning about the federal procurement system. So that um, with that, we will start. So I have a janitorial business as of five minutes ago. So I, um, I don't actually, but that I, I, I will pretend um, and I will go through the process the same as it would look for all of you that are starting the federal procurement journey. 
So I will share my screen. I hope. Oh, there we go. All right. Perfect. So this is what Canada Buys looks like. Um, I'm hoping that some of you have either seen it and or heard of it, but if not, that is totally fine. Um, so I just learned that Canada Buys exists. So I've just landed on it for the first time. Um, and I want to obviously get started. Um, I am a business, not a public service employee. <laughs> Um, fortunately, my small business is already registered in Ariba and has a CRA business number. Um, if yours aren't there, this will tell you how to do it. Ariba has their own helpline uh, if you're having issues with that, and CRA can help you with the business number portion. Um, I am not in an Indigenous business, but if I were, uh, there's a directory that I can register in, and there's more information about that under this Getting Started tab. Um, my procurement business number, I will need that, but fortunately, there is this really handy page that's going to tell me all about it. So um, we won't get too far into it today, but know that this resource is here and will help um, walk you through both the supplier registration information website and that procurement business number. So that resource is available as is Procurement Assistance Canada to help with that part. Opportunities, we will of course look at more in depth, um, but this one little box is bidding on opportunities and you can get more information on what to do before you start, um, where opportunities are coming from, not just federal, provincial, municipal, academic institutions, and like that. Um, preparing your bid, what to do before you even start uh, preparing one, how they're evaluated, and how they're awarded. So tons of resources to read through. Um, again, we, we unfortunately won't have time to get into all of it today. Um, but they are available on Canada Buys. Information is all here. Um, submitting questions, we highly recommend taking full advantage of that question period, uh, as well as this debrief. So after the contract is awarded, uh, you and you've submitted a tender or you submitted a bid, sorry, and you weren't awarded and you aren't really sure why, you felt like you met the criteria. Um, you are allowed to ask the contracting authority if you can go over that. So um, it will be up to their discretion whether or not they're able to provide that and what information they share, but it can give some insight into something you might not have considered for the next time. Um, it can obviously be frustrating uh, putting a lot of those resources into submitting that to not be awarded when you feel like you should have been. Um, so there are, is this mechanism to find out maybe why. And free seminars, Procurement Assistance Canada, I've heard they're great, um, offers free seminars. Um, more so in, in conjunction of doing presentations like this with our partner organizations, we also have our own kind of core topics that we'll go through um, that are more, not standardized, but um, a, a, a few a few topics that we talk about a lot. So feel free to register for those as well if you're wanting more information uh, in general. Standing offers, supply arrangements, if that's something of interest, there is more information on both of those, um, as well as some programs we have available. Uh, the Canadian Collaborative Procurement Initiative is essentially so the same thing, uh, municipal, uh, academic institution, schools, hospitals, having access to federal processes and pricing. Um, the green procurement is trying to make federal procurement more uh, environmentally friendly. 
procurement strategy for indigenous business is a set aside program um, to promote indigenous participation. Uh, procurement pricing, that's just some information on pricing that might be of interest. And again, uh, Procurement Assistance Canada, I've heard they're very helpful. So more information on any of those, go ahead and look into them more and some more events. So that's, I've gotten started. Uh, again, we'll look at tender opportunities in a little bit, but this is another really handy one if you're very new because it will provide an overview of the whole thing. So there's the supply manual, trade agreements. Uh, this is all very policy oriented. If that's how your brain works and you want to read through all of that, it is an open source document. You have an access to it. Um, personally, I don't love to spend my recreational reading time doing that, but some are very policy oriented. So that is an option if you want to know everything there is to know, it's there. Um, and then there's the whole procurement process, which can help. Um, it is a very different pro process to private sector business. So seeing it at a glance, the whole thing can, can help get your head around it. So there's more information on all of these, planning it. Um, and this is from government perspective. So how we would go about running a tender, which can help from your perspective to understand where, where things are going, when things are happening, and how. Um, so with that, obviously there's also support. There is Procurement Assistance Canada, as well as um, helplines directly. So there's Ariba and Canada Buys both have their own uh, that you can ask for help if you're having issues with the platforms themselves. Uh, Procurement Assistance Canada, we're happy to troubleshoot and try to help you, but we don't have any more access to anything than you do. We don't have any kind of backdoor password um, account information stuff. We, we can't see anything that you can't. So we can try to help and see where where things are causing trouble, but we won't be able to do the actual IT side of it. But luckily there are people for that that you can reach out to. Um, questions so far? Yes, perfect. Yes, we'll be short sharing the recording. So now we have all of the tender opportunities. This is the big, the, the big part of it. Um, because I, so my small business is janitorial services. So I right now just want to know what's out there. Uh, it'll default to showing you both awarded and open. I don't really need to know about what's already been awarded. I just want to know about what's open right now. So I am going to look for janitorial under this open filter. And it's and what is going to happen? There we go. For RCMP, janitorial services. Perfect. It closes in a few days, a few weeks actually. So lots of time there. It's not going to be a mad scramble to try to get things together in two days, um, which is great. It can take a little bit of time. General description is right here. Um, Sounds great. Contact information, this will come, this will be important um, in a little bit and I'll show you why. But no, this is the contracting authority. This is who is going to be overseeing this tender and bidding details. So eh, that's, this will be the, your solicitation document and we'll have all of the everything that you need um except that it's not this one eh, move over it is actually this one usually the it'll be a, amendment zero 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 and that will be the very first solicitation document with all of the information um 
not and the rest of them will be numbered. Except that is. Try that. Try that. There we go. 41 pages. That looks better. Um, so when you're first looking at a solicitation document, you don't really want to read all 41 pages because you, you just need to know whether or not this is something that you're able to do, interested in doing within the scope and capacity that you can provide. So we don't necessarily need to spend an hour looking through the ins and outs of it. So we can go down to Annex A, which is the statement of work. The statement of work. Um, which usually just pops right up, but it's page 16 in this case. So this is just kind of a one page overview of the whole thing. Everything you need to know um, in, in a nutshell, what it's going to be. So this detachment is two floors, um, front counter area, work areas, no problem. I 100% can do that, no problem. Sometimes it'll be like, it's for um, the RCMP, all of BC's detachments, which to me, that would be too much. I have one employee. Um, I can't do every single building in BC. I'm not Sam. So with that, I would look into other options and try to find a way into those tenders a different way. Um, but this is just the one detachment. So I would go ahead and start putting my bid together. Let's say this was for a much bigger um, piece of work. So maybe I would makes it really hard with the um, screen sharing button there. You can't see all of it, can you? Um, I would want to find the partnering with a business. So if this was for every detachment in BC, I would be interested in partnering with somebody who might be a prime contractor. They would submit their bid for the whole portion. And I would maybe ask for, you know, I'm in Kamloops, so maybe I want the Kamloops and Vernon detachment, say. Um, so I could put my company name, who I was, some information about me, my contact information, and just pop that in there. It would take two minutes. And then whoever won that would be able to see that list and go, oh, there's somebody here that wants to take on some of this work. And from there, we would carry on. So subcontracting is always an option, but it's not facilitated by the government. So we don't, we're not involved. It's up to the two businesses to come to that agreement, figure that out um, for, for themselves. So that is always an option. It's a very low, um, low time commitment to just pop your name on some of those lists. If there's a few that you're looking at, go ahead and do that. Um, maybe say that I typed in janitorial, nothing really came out that was anything that I was interested in. And I didn't want to come back every day and check or multiple times a day and, and see what's being posted. I could just follow this. So whenever something comes in with anything to do with janitorial from municipal, provincial, federal governments, it would send me an email. So this is what it'll, so it'll be only open tenders with this janitorial keyword. Um, that's name, email. This I would probably change. I wouldn't leave it as new search results because if I'm doing one of these for janitorial, for cleaning, for custodial, for any of those, um, I won't know. So I might put in Canada buys janitorial search result or something. You can make this whatever you like um, that kind of keeps it clear in your inbox and that it's not just all coming in with this generic 
title. Um, these two, if you only want um, a certain type of tender notice, go ahead and make that more specific. There are, this will probably return a lot of results. You might get a lot of emails. Um, we can narrow that down using this UNSPSC um, code. So this is the one for cleaning services. It's very helpful that it tells you there. So now this will only, this number is only related to janitorial and cleaning services. So maybe you also want to follow this search and then you want to type in um, spelled that right on the first go, um, custodial search, which might turn up a few different options. So there, you can go about that and then maybe spend some time setting up a few of these and then you're not checking back all the time. Um, the other thing, what else do we want to talk about with that? Um, question period, we've mentioned it a little bit, but if there's anything that you're wondering, you know, maybe um, it has two floors and I don't know, this, this line wasn't here and it didn't tell you what the second floor had. The first floor was your office space and working areas and your second floor, you weren't quite sure, was it, you know, a uh, kitchen or storage, who knows? So you wanted to know that made a difference in your bid, you can ask that question. They will, you will take this contact information and you will ask um, for that. Hey, what is the contents of this second floor include? Um, they will not send you a, an email back, but they will post the answer as an amendment. Oh, this is, this might not even be the same tender. Anyways. It will get posted here as with all of the answers to the questions asked. Um, if you have the question, other people likely do as well. So they will provide that information to everybody at the same time. Um, open, fair, and transparent procurement process. We don't want one person to have information uh, before or that other people don't have access to. So if you know the answer made a, a deal breaker, for you, or maybe it went the other way, and other people were going, oh, well, like I'm not going to submit a bid because I don't know what the second floor looks like. Um, that wouldn't be fair. So all of the answers will get published here. Um, and like that. So that is some things that I would look at um, just at a glance when I saw a tender that looked appealing or something that I would want to do, um, I, I, I would start there. There's are a few other things you might run into, um, so, so not everything that comes up here will be, oh my goodness, um, will be an RFP, some might be um, standing offers, some might be a request for information, which isn't a bidding process at all. There's no commodity involved. It's just they're looking for information. So you can respond back and provide that to them if you like. Uh, there's no monetary value attached. You don't get paid for your information, but it's, it's a way to improve the procurement system. It's a way to improve or make certain things better um, within your industry. So Again, maybe there's my head. There it is. Um, maybe you should look at this. Wasn't really anything that was interesting. I've lost it again. Stephanie, I wonder if yes. we could look for some. Uh, I saw a few questions come by, oh. uh, just related to what you were talking about now. So maybe we can. Have a couple of uh, questions. Absolutely. And move on. Absolutely. Um, could you review where you found the page to sign up for notifications? Yes. 
So you can, two ways. Um, when you type anything in, stop it. There we go. When you type anything in, follow this search will show up. So follow the search means whatever you typed in will is 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 what you're kind of subscribing to. Um, you'll just click on that, and it will bring you to the notification um, page where you'll fill in the information. The other thing which this reminded me of, and this is also why I, I forgot to in the last one, but why I cancel out the award notices is because there's a lot of them and it makes it trickier to find things. Like these were closing in 2012. I don't want to look at that anymore. <laughs> but um, you can also... Uh, doesn't really matter. So on any of these as well, you can also really you can also follow this tender specifically. So if you're interested in it um, and want to see when amendments are posted and when um if a closing date's changed, you can also do the same thing and just follow that notice on its own. It doesn't have to be the whole search. It can just be this one. Uh, so it'll be an email notification for this uh, tender itself. Um, that is the tender notice. How did I get that number? Yes, on the side, on this column here, um, it will commodity UNS PSC code will be hyperlinked right here. If you click on it, it will take a second, probably faster for you on your computer. Um, it will just search for that number and then you can also follow that search. So most, and I th think if I went um, metering, I should be able to do the same thing. Commodity, eh, well, that's, so this one is older, which is why that's not showing the same thing. Um, that's okay. So it'll be on that column. It'll tell you the commodity code, it'll either be the UNSPSC, which is for the newer tenders for anything historic, it might say GSIN, which was the previous um, numbering system. Either way, th the only difference will be when they were posted. So these older ones won't say UNSPSC. Um, how do you get to the most recent tenders? Um, oh, sorry. Thank you, Meg. Review some of the filters. Yes, we can. So category would be good services construction. Um, janitorial would be services. Pens would be goods construction. Um, services related to goods. I don't know if there's a clear definition, but it's I'm sure if that's what you provided, you would know. <laughs> um, I'm starting to think of a good example. Um, notice type. So this is the request for information uh, that we just talked about. It's just they're asking for help, basically. They, they have a question they want to know about. Um, request for proposal is... RFP, so that would just be a kind of a standard request. Uh, they want, like the one we were just looking at, they want somebody to provide janitorial services for this detachment. They are looking for a proposal. Uh, supply arrangements, standing offers. Uh, we can talk about more. If 
the if if needed. Um, if not, we don't need to get into it. Uh, RFP against a supply arrangement would be if you're on that supply arrangement already, and then they're issuing a call up. I think might maybe I don't know if I've ever seen an RFP against a supply arrangement that, but that's what I would um, interpret that to be. Um, advanced contract award notice is when there's only one known supplier or one known provider of something that they know that they need, they, the contracting authority will say, they will let you know publicly. So instead of just going and awarding that contract and not making it public, they say they post it for usually 15 days and it's an invitation. So if you're scrolling by, you see that and you're like, oh, actually like I can do that. You can submit a bid and then it will go into the tendering process. So it's letting you know in advance that they are planning to award that amount of work to this company um, because they, they don't. Instead of going through the whole tendering process, there's only one person that historically has been able to provide that service or good. Um, some of these, like the invitations to qualify, the directed contract notifications of intent, I. Federally, we don't really use those. Um, in my experience, I haven't seen a federal contract posted with, with any of those. Um, so the, the main ones are the ones that we talked about. Status, open is, oh, that's what I was looking for. Um, currently accepting bids. Expired is um, when the closing date has passed, but it has not yet been awarded. So they're not accepting any new tenders, but they also haven't posted the award notice. It hasn't been, they haven't done all of the uh, evaluations and done that process yet, but they are working on it. So it will go into that gray area between open and awarded. Canceled, it got canceled for whatever reason. Um, awarded, it has been awarded. Location, um, there's all, all over. If you only want to do work in Canada or you only want to work in Alberta or a part of Alberta, BC, part of BC, you can make that as narrow as you like. Um, maybe that's a strategy too. If you are a small business, you're based in Abbotsford um, or Penticton, Penticton, nice, nice, nice town of Penticton. So, you know, maybe you're not really in a position to travel to Nanaimo or to Surrey or to, you know, somewhere else, even within the province, maybe you would just make your search criteria really small and then turn on that search notification or that email notification for that search. And then when anything falls within those parameters, you'll know about it and you can act from there. Um, the problem is that that will really limit the results. You won't see, you know, the chances of a federal tender being posted in Penticton. They're not huge. So that's kind of um, two ways of doing it is one, you get all the information to decide, or you can just say, absolutely, these are my parameters. I'm not willing to look beyond those. Um, let me know if anything meets them. Definitely. So you can make those. Stephanie, I just have a question. Would you be able to, like, for example, in the Okanagan Valley, I mean, it's from essentially, you know, Vernon all the way to a Soyuz. Would you be able to check off a couple of boxes or do you just have to choose what? Oh, look at that. So that might be feasible for depending on where you're located. If you serve an area, that would be handy. Yeah. Absolutely. So even, you know, Kamloops, but nah, Chilliwack's not that far. Um, oh, Mike has Mike. a question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hi, Mike here. Uh, I'm Stephanie's colleague. Uh, just one thing I just wanted to highlight is that that list of municipalities uh, likely changes over time, uh, depending on what opportunities are available at that moment. So if you don't see your municipality 
for area of interest listed. Currently, it might show up next week or whenever. It seems to be a random list at this point. Uh, the website is still definitely a work in progress. So I personally don't recommend that people filter too deeply because uh, a lot of opportunities aren't classified down to that municipal level. So like Stephanie suggested, you can set up a filter or a notification for a particular municipality or series of municipalities, but I would also set up another notification for something a little more broader in scope. So you're suggesting maybe the province instead of a municipality yep. like, okay, perfect. Will be more, more reliable, um, and you won't miss anything because it wasn't like Mike said, it wasn't tagged that specifically. Um, so, but those it, there, it's an option. It's there. Um, if that's something you, that maybe location is really important. Um, in which case, but again, you might not even necessarily see it. So if you're not using the search, um, notifications, you can also, if you check back once a day, you can just look at tenors that have been published within the last day um, or that are going to close soon. So if you, you know, you can't um, get a bid done in a month, so you want only bids, only tenders that are going to close more than a month away. Um, so yeah, that's some, those are some of the filters. Very good advice from my don't search, don't filter too narrow. Um, but obviously there are a lot of results every day. So happy medium of narrow it down enough that it's applicable, but without um, maybe canceling some that you would otherwise want to see. So the parameters that are absolutely have to be within the province or have to be um, closing more than a month away. Maybe um, those are your two that have to be. Um, but Stephanie, and, I had a, like a, a broader question. Like, do you find that, that I don't know if you know as well, uh, but when a business is in a small business is sort of engaging in this process, would you say that they are intending to have these government procurement contracts as their only business, or do they use it as an addition to their business that they already have? Because again, it, it's quite obvious that, you know, this is a bit of a commitment, a time commitment and everything else. So I just wondered if you could speak to that a little bit. Yeah, I think it really depends. Um, you know, some contracts are quite in depth for quite a long time. So if you get a contract, that might be what you do for two years, but it might not be what you do for the next 50 years or for the life of your business. So especially with the standing offers, if you get on that, you, you do your homework in the beginning, you're now on that standing offer list, you can go on with regular business if they call up and you you're you're one of those names and you go yes I, I want to do that work um or you can say no and you can say you know since I've um put my bid together for the standing offer I got this other contract or business is picked up or I'm doing something else or whatever you know at this time I don't really it it, it, it isn't gonna fit that's also totally fine there's no expectation that you're gonna um, be in that same place that you were when you first submitted it. So there's no negative repercussion of that. You are allowed to say no. There's no contract in place until they've asked and you've agreed. So I, I, I think to your question of whether or not it's a sole revenue source, um, sometimes, and but also I think it's a diversification of revenue stream where it's another way if you're not really 
maybe you're in a small town, maybe you're having a hard time with your marketing or you're like, you know, you're just having a hard time getting clients. It is always an option to do an extra little bit of homework and see if there's something out there. The government's a really big client uh, that has, that spends a lot of money every year. It's a great um, kind of contact, if, if you will, to pursue that when other business might not be as active as you'd like it to be. That's that's a great answer. And I just wondered if you could add one more yeah. thing. Um, this process seems to be pretty heavily front loaded. Like you need to kind of get your ducks in a row. You need to get your numbers. You need to, you know, get your searches organized and get, you know, all that done. And then would you say that it's um, sort of, you know, it just kind of ticks along there, you know, like when you're looking at your emails and you see something that's interested, you're already all registered and ready to go. You just have to write the bid. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, I I, I would say it is. Um, obviously, there are some very loud traffic. My apologies. Um, there, once you've maybe registered in, um, in SRI, you have your procurement business number, you've registered in Ariba, you've followed some searches, you've, um, you have some of your numbers, your kind of that in information you're going to need, then yeah, it's kind of a waiting game, which can be really hard if that is your prime revenue source, that you're kind of just waiting for them to need what you have. But if it's something you can do on the side, maybe that's what you do Sunday morning over coffee, and then you can continue with the rest of your business through the week, month, year, and when something comes up, you're going to know about it. So um, I, I, I would agree that it's more of an active role at the beginning, and then obviously when there's a tender uh, that you want to partake in, you'll have to do some work to get that bid together. But um, for the most part, if you have if you have that information available, um, you'll you'll be in good shape. It won't be a huge um, time output as much, I guess, as the research phase. Hi, Stephanie. So good. Sorry to you. pop in quick. Um, looks like Beth's been trying to uh, she asked in the Q and A and in the chat box. Oh, Just, if we could address that, that'd be great. Um, yes. Any, uh, okay, so there's one, any specific information on medical devices? Um, nothing specific. If you want to know more about that industry in particular, definitely reach out to um, myself, Mike, Pack. Um, we can kind of schedule a one-on-one -on -one and go over some of the medical um, industry, but there's nothing that different, you can search medical devices on Canada Buys. It will give you information. Um, Sounds good. Um, just a minute regarding the medical devices. So I actually searched uh, the Canada Buys website and I didn't find any results in terms of medical device. So I'm just wondering if there is a need that I could address for the government, like I could develop the medical device as I'm a biomedical engineer. So definitely I'm looking for a one-on-one -on -one with you. That would be great. Okay. Perfect. We will, we will chat about that. Um, send us an email. Our contact information will be available. Um, so Stephanie will, uh, yeah, um, yes. Jen will have all that posted, you know, so that you can Perfect. directly, anybody on the call today can directly, you know, get in touch with Jen or Mike or, you know, somebody will get back to you with questions. And we all have, uh, WeBC has uh, your email address. And so, yeah, you won't get, uh, you'll get through to who you need to. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, when I searched confectionery goods open um, in Canada, in Canada filters, I didn't get anything that actually relates to chocolate. I'm getting results for janitorial in there. How do I create a search that would generate a request for goods, not services? So on that filter, you can go category, goods. Um, notice type, doesn't really matter. Status, open, location, Canada. What else was there? 
Um, goods open Canada, perfect. So, no, and maybe there isn't anything right now that. No, oh, that's fine. So the problem with having a search that narrow is you might not get any results, but it also means that you don't have any results that aren't applicable. So um, yeah, there at this time, there is no requirement for those things. What you can also do is if you were to just type in confectionery, um, it would be more broad, but you could get more information. And then, which is a good example, um, we can take that information and go somewhere else with it. So I will do this really quick because I'm sure that we have more questions and not a ton of time left. So I won't spend a whole lot of time, but something to be aware of. So if you've done all of that, there's nothing open in Canada for what you have, you can go into that historic um, information. So award notices. So in, let me go back over. Um, unfortunately, there wasn't really, not seeing any results in here either. Oh, but there's 17, where are the rest of them? What's wrong? Doesn't the government like chocolate? What's happening? I, you know, I would think that that would be much more popular than it is. Um, oh, award notices. That's right. Yeah. Um, Mike, Mike here. Yeah. So when it comes to like confectionery items and whatnot, those are typically bundled in with food or groceries or other types of commodities. So like Stephanie said, it's you have to think a little bit about what search terms you use. Sometimes it's good to have multiple keywords that identify your particular market or whatnot and not focus in on a single potentially niche product or service. And Mike, okay. could you say, like, for example, staying on the confectionery example, if uh, you uh, were selling confectionery in Canada, looking to sell to the government, but you see that this older notice has Gordon Food Services in Winnipeg, would you be able to, like as a person who has a small chocolate business, reach out to Gordon Food Services and ask them some more questions? Like, would you suggest that that might create a relationship with, you know, somebody that eventually might end up doing a government contract? Exactly. Okay. So this contact details, um, you can, oh, this was awarded to, that's why. Contact information. That makes sense. So this was, it was PSPC in Quebec that had this requirement. So Gordon Food Services submitted their bid, they were awarded. Um, but you could if this was something that applied to your business, you could take this woman's name and go search GEDS, Government Electronic Directory System, Service, System, System. Um, and it will bring you this page. And then you can look up Rena Marsland, for instance, if she's still around, um, and it will give you her contact information, which, and her department, it'll give you all this information about her and her team. So then you could say, hey, in 2018, you had a requirement for um, janitorial services, confectioner, whatever it might've been. Um, just so you know, like I supply that, do you need it? Does your department need it? Um, you can reach out to them directly and you can, oh, there she is. Um, and you can engage into a lower dollar value contract. So instead of it being posted through Canada Buys, you can go enter a contract under $25,000 for goods and, or even under, under $10,000, there's a credit card, they can buy $10,000 of chocolate, no problem. So using that award 
awarded filter will give you a ton of historic data. Um, it's all the tenders that have been posted since I think 2009. So there's way more information there than what's currently open. And it will give you, what, 14 years of data. And you can find, you can probably find some kind of government requirement um, in those 14 years. And you can find that department and you can reach out to them directly. So that's another strategy um, for more of those less commonly tendered goods, services, whatever it may be. Um, and another way to use, again, it'll be research up front, but it can be a little bit more, um, I guess, interactive than sit and wait if you can find a department that's had that requirement in the past. Well, and as any small business owner knows, you know, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And having a couple of good contacts within the government, the provincial or the federal government for your product or service could make a huge difference to your bottom line, you know, in a month, in a year. And, you know, so again, you know, networking, we forget about it. But on a website like this, I mean, this is like a huge dating site, you know, for, you know, matching people up. So it's great. Absolutely. Um, could you use an NAICS code in this type of search? Um, I'm not familiar with what that is. Um, federally, we use the UNSPSC. Now we use JSON before. Um, if that's more of a provincial, territorial, municipal, um, code then i still don't know mike are you yeah. familiar yeah with so familiar? that's more of an industry i know uh, that's more used for industry classification purposes so like you said stephanie uh the uns psc code and the gsin codes are currently being used by the federal government so that um nai CS wouldn't, it wouldn't be tagged on any of these Canada buys tenders. Correct? Yeah, typically not. So, um, yeah, probably not. Um, so well, I will hand it we, back. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, we've got about 10 minutes left if my mm -hmm. uh, watch is right. And if anybody, again, we are going to provide the information for you if you want to contract. Stephanie or Mike directly or you know to to get your questions answered but if anybody's got a burning question if it's okay with you Stephanie they can just either raise their hand or you know ask a couple of questions and then we're gonna have to wrap up but I hope everybody's uh, signed up for the next two uh, we cafes because we've got some really interesting information and this is a process you know so thanks so much for everybody you know and their great questions so far. Sounds Absolutely. Um, yeah, I saw one more up here that was related to, oh, I lost it again, um, related to sorting the tenders. So these arrows here, um, you can search by any of these. So opening date, this would be most recently opened, which I believe is today, um, to ones that I guess don't have one. So that is a way that you could get the most recent is just clicking these arrows, closing, same thing, L latest closing, which will probably have no results, um, to most recent, oh, there you go. Closes in the year 9,999. So this is a way um, alphabetically, I think, um, would be these ones. Anyways, you can search using those arrows to help. Um, see the searches. Um, is there a plan for IBD to follow the same format? Currently, they do not use the same classification system. In assuming Indigenous business directory? Is that the I IBD? Yes. Um, I don't know if they have plans to change what they're currently using. Um, not that I've heard, but I I don't know. 
Yeah, it's Mike here again. Uh, it's just my understanding that they are currently oh. rethinking the Indigenous Business Directory, and so that might be something they uh, utilize in a future format of the directory. Very cool. Thank you. I did not know that. Um, so yeah, Seth, I will. Yeah, like we said, anything, um, any questions that we either didn't get to or kind of just touch the surface of, reach out. We are happy to chat more, um, have these one-on-one -on -one meetings, and we're, ha we're happy to help. But I, for now, I will pass it back to Kathy to wrap us up. Mike, do you have something that you needed to say before we kind of wrap up? Uh, just a general question, just to summarize things, Steph. Uh, so are all federal government opportunities on Canada buys or only certain ones? Only certain ones. So all of the tenders that are posted um, above $25,000 for goods, above $40,000 for services are on Canada buys. Um, anything under $10,000 is done via credit card. So using that low dollar value approach that we chatted about with GEDS, anything between 10 and 25 or 40 is on proactive disclosures. Um, and there's a link to that page that I will post in the chat. So yeah. anything on Canada buys is that high dollar competitive process. Um, and those lower dollar value ones are elsewhere. Thank Great. you, Mike. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. You, you might want to kind of dip your toe in the water here and start, you know, low and kind of move up as you go. But like we say, uh, Stephanie and Mike have been very generous today and said, contact us, you know, we can talk to you or have a one on one. So please take advantage of that. It's wonderful to have a direct contact in the procurement office. So uh, yeah, thanks, everybody. Uh, especially thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Mike, for today. This was a great Again, uh, uh, session number two in a four part session. And it's been, uh, I've done these webinars before and you know, you can't get everything uh, through everything in 30 minutes. So it's nice to be able to spread it out, uh, take some notes, think about it, watch it again, and then move on to our next series. So thank you very much uh, to Stephanie today and to Mike. Okay, um, I just want to let everybody know, remind them about the next in the series. On August 10th, we're doing Bidding Best Practices, Strong Strategies for Small Business, which I'm sure all of you are very interested in. And August 24th, Strong Bid, Smart Growth, How to Supply Goods and Service to the Government. Yeah, like, you know, sometimes these contracts actually make such a difference to a small business. And really, um, I think Stephanie would agree the government has to buy it from someone. So why not you, <laughs> you know, which is fantastic. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. And I want to thank everybody today for joining us on the call. We had nice, uh, a lot of questions. We had a lot of people today in the webinar, which is great. Um, I wanted to uh, just remind everybody to visit our website for more information. Uh, please sign up for our eblast newsletters. So you just get one email from us once a month and it lists all of our webinars, seminars, we cafes, and you can pick and choose. Often you can register right from the eblast, which is great. Um, and I want to thank all of you for joining us today. Uh, Jen is going to do a feedback poll right now. I, I hope you remember at the beginning, I said if anyone is interested in a particular topic that they would like WBC to offer, please throw it into the feedback poll. Um, and uh, yeah, it will just take a minute or two. And there it is. And yeah, we appreciate the feedback because we really uh, understand that everyone's busy, especially when you've got a small business. We don't want to waste your time. We want to add value to what you do every day. So uh, thank you very much for doing the feedback poll, entering anything that you think we should be talking about. And I just want to thank again, Stephanie and Mike and everybody that was here today. Uh, we know your time is valuable, especially when you've got a small business. So goodbye, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Please keep in touch. 
if you have any questions. And all of you will receive a recording of this webinar in a day or two. You're going to get a link to the web uh, to the recording that I believe you can watch for the next 30 days. I'm sure you'll watch it tomorrow. So bye, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. Bye.